Golden State Media Concepts bring you the Bible Study Podcast. Reflect and journey the Bible as together we study God's Word and be inspired. Bible study made fun and informative for all ages. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Bible Study Podcast. To the GSMC Bible Study Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I hope that you are having a blessed Holy Week so far. It's not your typical Holy Week. We, most of us, are in isolation and um, worshiping from home in some ways. I hope you have found uh, ways to do that that still feel fulfilling to you. It's it's definitely a different year, but it is still Maundy Thursday, and I am here to talk about the gospel assigned for Maundy Thursday. This is often a service that includes um, a washing, uh, a foot washing ceremony, whether that's washing just one member of the congregation's feet sort of symbolically or where everyone gets their feet washed. Some congregations do it so the the pastor washes the feet. Some congregations do it where it rotates so one person washes someone's feet and then that person who just got their feet washed washes the next person's feet. It's it's done in all kinds of different ways, but of course it, it goes back to the Last Supper, the account in John where Jesus washes the disciples' feet, which of course is the gospel for today. So let's go ahead and read that. It is John 13, 1 through 7, excuse me, 1 through 17, and 31b through 35. Now, before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and to go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going back to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of the, uh, not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet and put on his robe and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example, that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glory him at once. Little children, I am only with you a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, Where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Again, that's John chapter 13, verses 1 through 17 and 31b through 35. And because this is a a bit of a different Holy Week and we are many of us in isolation, I am thinking about 
service and what it means to be a servant in these times. Often I think we get caught up in the in the imagery and the um, tradition of Maundy Thursday. We get caught up in that picture of the Last Supper and the disciples gathered around Jesus, Jesus doing the words that we now are so familiar with from communion. Um, and then this account in John's gospel where he does wash the disciples' feet. And he says, as I have done for you, you should do for each other. And as I said at the beginning, often we do that as a part of our Maundy Thursday worship service, and that's great. It is symbolic, and it's a a great thing to do, but what does it, what does it mean to you? I, I wish you were here so that I could, I could get your answers in person. You know, what, what does that service, what does that act mean to you? Jesus washing the disciples' feet saying that we should do likewise. Does that mean literally that, you know, once a year we should wash someone's feet on Monday, Thursday? Does that mean that we should wash each other's feet on other days besides Monday, Thursday? Well, it's not quite that literal, but especially now that we are in this, these different circumstances, um, our, our temporary normal, hopefully it's temporary, and we aren't out as much as we used to be. What is service? If it's not necessarily a tangible act like Jesus washing the disciples' feet, what does that look like? How do you feel about service now that you are at home? Have you been thinking about it? I have been because... W- it's, it's an interesting question. I know um, not only are many of my colleagues learning to do various new things on technology, including Zoom worship and Facebook Live worships and streaming worships of all kinds. They're learning all kinds of new tricks, but they're also having to learn new ways of ministering when they aren't with their congregation in person each week. And they are limited in the visits that they can make. How does that look? I saw an article uh, recently that um, the Episcopal Church is doing last rites via webcam in some cases, which is one way of doing that. But, you know, you still don't have that tangible connection. So what does service look like? What does co- what does God call us to do? Well, that last sentence, I think, is where we get our, ha- our answer. Uh, this is my commandment. Jesus gives us a new commandment adds to that list of 10 that we are so familiar with. I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Um, And of course, people will know that we follow Christ because of our love for one another. And we can still love each other, even though we can't see each other. We can still love each other via checking in with one another. We can still love each other by whether that's a phone call or a letter or an email, we have so many ways to connect anymore. And I think that's wonderful. Uh, I think I mentioned before that I speak to my parents every day. Now I've always spoken to them multiple times a week, but now I check in every day, sometimes twice. And um, part of that's being stuck and inside and wanting to chat. But part of it is just to, to check in on them, to see how they're doing, to see what is going on, if there's anything that... Uh, they are concerned about or they need and I'm not there. My, my brother is the one who's physically in my hometown and he does their grocery shopping and everything because he works at the grocery store. So that's really helpful and it's definitely a weight off of my mind. My, my in-laws aren't as lucky and so we, we are concerned, um, about them going out and getting groceries and being careful. So I talk to my parents every day. We talk to my in-laws, uh, pretty much every day as well. Uh, checking in with each other people. I know there's a million memes, right? But just giving someone a good chuckle, it's worth more than you might think. <laughs> you might not think posting that dumb meme on Facebook is an act of service. And sometimes it's not. I mean, really be careful about the memes you post and don't post the th- ones that are just hurtful or ugly or whatever. But ones that give someone a good chuckle and kind of brighten their day. Excellent. What does service look like to you in this time of isolation? What would, you know, there's that phrase, it's overused, but what would Jesus do? Well, what would Jesus be doing in this situation? He maybe would still be out and about and being with people. He, you know, clearly had no problem healing lepers, touching lepers, etc. But I think he would also 
encourage us to take care of ourselves so that we can take care of others so that we can continue to minister to others. Let's talk about more. Let's talk more about this idea of service after the break, but uh, we will go ahead and take our first break of the podcast. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Bible study podcast, and I'll be right back. Back. As part of this break, I wanted to speak with you once again about Birch Gold Group, which is one of the top dealers of physical precious metals in the United States. Birch Gold Group helps Americans diversify their savings with gold and silver. Customers can purchase for physical possession or convert a portion of their IRA or 401k into an IRA backed by physical precious metals. In 2008, the U.S. national debt was $10 trillion. Today, it's over $23 trillion and it's still rising. If you don't think we're sitting on a house of cards, then you're probably living with your head in the sand. But you're listening to this podcast, and so you maybe need a plan. Maybe you're looking for a plan. Because can you really afford another hit to your retirement like the last downturn when the S&P dropped 50%? Probably not. You can hedge against inflation and hedge against uncertainty and instability with precious metals. Gold is a safe haven against uncertainty. Um, right now, thanks to a little-known IRS tax law, you can move your IRA or eligible 401k into an IRA backed by physical gold and silver. It's perfect for those who want to protect their hard-earned retirement savings from any future geopolitical certainty. Um when you look back historically, when the bottom falls out of everything else, gold tends to safeguard savings. So Birch Gold Group has helped thousands of satisfied customers, countless five-star reviews, and has an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau. Contact Gert Birch Gold Group today to request a free info kit on physical precious metals. See if diversifying into gold and silver makes sense for you. This comprehensive 20-page kit reveals how gold and silver can protect your savings and how you can legally move your IRA or 401k out of risky stocks and bonds and into a precious metals IRA. To get your no-cost, no-obligation kit, go to birchgold.com slash Bible. That's B-I-R-C-H gold dot com slash Bible. Still on the search of that one true love? On the limbo in this crazy world of dating, marriage, relationships. Well, listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Relationship Podcast. Your one-stop podcast for everything about relationships. Welcome back to the GSMC Bible Study Podcast. We are speaking about the Gospel from John assigned for this Maundy Thursday. And before the break, I was talking about service. Uh, service in the uh, through the eyes of love. I'm so happy that I have uh, friends and colleagues who are such wonderful pastors and who are wonderful, compassionate, kind theologians. Um, my friend Christine posted on her Facebook page today the following. On a Thursday night, on a Thursday, excuse me, not unlike this one, before his betrayal, Jesus washed the feet of his disciples because in the ancient world, the washing of feet was an act of service, considered beneath those who had wealth and station. The feet were always dirty since people walked regularly in sandals through dust and sand. By washing the feet of his friends as a slave would wash feet, Jesus tipped the scales of power by giving them a new commandment, love one another as he does. In this coronavirus world today, what if on this holy day, this Maundy Thursday, instead of feet, we wash our hands as a ritual sign of servanthood, knowing that we take our Lord's commandment to heart? love one another, dear friends, wash your hands. I love that. Um, I think that is a wonderful way of thinking about it. Every time you wash your hands, you can think about 
that as an act of service. It might not seem like much, but you are doing an act of service that protects your love, those you love. Most, most closely it protects those who are in your house, but that act of service reminds us of the other acts of service that we can do right now, which is to not go out and touch everything and breathe on people and be close to everyone so that they, we are not spreading the virus or catching the virus and then spreading it to others. There are wonderful things that we can do as acts of service that we might not before all of this thought, have thought of as acts of service. And washing our hands is one of those. Staying home is an act of service. Obviously, there are people who are doing acts of service that are much more tangible. There are doctors and nurses and respiratory therapists and uh, people that from everyone from the janitor to the uh, whatever you want to, you know, in the hospital who are doing major acts of service. There are people who are keeping the grocery stores open. And these are all acts of service that seem, you know, that might seem more tangible and more easy, easy to see. But staying home is an act of service. Washing your hands is an act of service. Socially, uh, physically distancing, act of service. Um, yeah. I, I I like that. So wash your hands as an act of service. If you need, you know, some kind of ritual for tonight, since you did not maybe get to go, since you did not go to church in person, maybe you did watch a live stream or you will watch a live stream or something along those lines, but you can wash your hands as a ritual act of service. And as you're washing your hands, you can pray for your friends and loved ones as you do so. And I think that is a lovely way of thinking about love and service during this time. We can emulate Jesus by washing, uh, but instead of washing our neighbor's feet, we wash our hands in order to protect and love our neighbors. And I think that is a beautiful way to think about it. I'm going to wrap this up. I know it's not a very long episode, but just some thoughts on Maundy Thursday. I hope that you had a blessed Maundy Thursday, whatever it looked like. If you were working, thank you. If you were staying home, thank you. Um, just thank you for being you and for being God's hands and feet in the world. Please join me again next time. Uh, if you are a fan of this podcast, please do like us on social media, retweet, follow, share, do all those wonderful things. And if you could give us uh, a review, either written or five star, that would be really, really helpful to get the podcast out to other people who may be looking for um, the word of God in their lives. So again, thank you so much for joining me. Have a blessed day rest of your Maundy Thursday, and I will speak with you again tomorrow when we talk about the text for Good Friday. Have a wonderful night, and please do remember that you are a beautiful and beloved child of God. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Bible Study Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music, from sports, to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.